It's time again for the Science Bowl. Zoo Parade for five. What big teeth the hippo has are actually a pair of these. Science Potpourri for 10. Would a snake most likely eat every day? Every week, Dateline Science for 10. Why are some elephants wearing necklaces these days? Green things for 15. And now, here's your host, Mr. Z himself, Dave Zarin. Thank you, and welcome to the Science Bowl. This the beginning of our 35th year in the Prince George's County Public Schools, testing science literacy, and we hope you play along. We're starting out this year with our middle schools, and uh, the first of our middle schools is going to be playing today is Martin Luther King Jr., actually the defending middle school champion. And, you know, if you've been following our show over the years, you know that normally we have students in a studio here. I'm standing in the studio, but all of our players, where they are safe, are at home as we continue distance learning here in the Prince George's schools. Most everything about the show is the same, including the categories. These are our categories, if you've forgotten. Okay, Mr. Z, here's today's categories. Green Things, questions about plants and all things green and growing. Zoo Parade, a Noah's Ark of questions about animals. Body Systems, we'll see how much you know about yourself, about things like breathing and growing and digesting your food. Let's get physical. Questions that test your knowledge of physics and chemistry, earth science and space science. Then there's science potpourri. Here's a grab bag of science questions. Everything from air pollution to the kitchen zinc. And finally, Dateline Science. We'll ask you about science history and science in the news. Things are going to be a little bit different. We do not have the whole array of question values as we normally do. Each team is going to receive three questions from each of our six categories, valued at five points, 15 points, and 25 points. And then we're going to take, uh, we're going to bring the second team in. They'll be hailing from Samuel Ogle Middle School and doing the same with them. So follow along, keep score, but uh, see if you can keep up with these great players. Let's meet them right now. Playing today from Martin Luther King Middle School, we have Martin McCall. Martin, you can wave to everybody. We've got Kevin Kresge. Hey, Kevin. And we've got Kelvin Stewart. We start our teams out with 50 points, no penalties for incorrect answers. And the team that has the highest tally at the end of the game, after all 18 questions have been asked of both teams, will be our winner and we'll bring them back to play for a chance to become a semifinalist in this year's competition. We're so glad you're tuned in and we couldn't ask for three better players. Guys, are you ready? Yes. All right, let's do it. We're going to start out with the green things questions. The green things questions. And your first question will be for five points. Here we go. This molecule provides the green in greenery. Wait, we know this. Oh, this um, is chlorophyll, right? This is yes, chlorophyll. It's, yeah, it's chlorophyll. Final right. Chlorophyll it is. You start it out. You got yourself five points. Here's your 15 point question in green things. This fruit produces its own milk and can still be sent through the mail if the address is applied legibly to the fruit's husk. We're going to uh, take um, a minute to um, this. Isn't there right. coconuts? Which I'm thinking like it's coconut? a coconut. Yeah. Because a husk yeah. of a coconut, right? The shell, the heart. And, and it produces milk. Yeah. yeah. So what's your answer? Coconut. It is indeed a coconut. I wouldn't want to be the mailman having to deliver that and put it into a box, but you can mail a coconut. Here's your 25 point question in green things. Charles Darwin and his son did an experiment on oat coleoptiles, which showed why plants bend toward light. Is that response of plants bending toward light known as photoperiodism, photomagnetism, or phototropism? Wait, photoperiodism, magnetism, or tropism? Plants Wait. bending toward light. We know this. This is phototropism. Yeah, I think it's um, phototropism. Okay. It is right. phototropism. That's the way to do it. Thank you, guys. All right. We're ready to move on. You're batting a thousand so far. Here are your zoo parade questions for five points. This large rodent is sometimes called a quill pig, Q-U-I-L-L. -L. So you'd better leave it alone. 
Um, um we well, we said quills, which um, yeah, a, I would think a porcupine. Do you agree with right. that, Kevin? Yeah. All porcupine. right, it is the porcupine. Got yourself five more points. For 15 points, this is fascinating to me. Taylor Swift's first job as a child was to pick the egg cases of this predatory insect off trees on her family's Christmas tree farm. An insect, right. I might add, that does not live up to its religious name. We need to talk Wait. about this. Um, okay, Mr. Z said religious name, right? Oh, praying, yeah. mantises. praying mantis. Yeah. I think it's yes, praying, I, praying mantis. I think you're all on the right track. It is indeed the praying mantis. For 25 points in Zoo Crate, I have a visual question for you. We'll bring up a picture here and uh, have a question for you. And it is as follows. You've probably seen these. Sometimes they're called roly polies. Sometimes they're called potato bugs. And they even look like an armadillo. They are actually terrestrial members of what C initial group of invertebrates that includes crabs. Wait, crustaceans, right? Crabs yes. or crustaceans? Yeah. Crustaceans. Crustaceans is the right answer. Let's do your body systems questions. Here we go for five points. Doctors are often called on to remove foreign objects that people have swallowed or otherwise managed to get inside themselves. But if those surgeons find a hammer and an anvil, they leave them alone because they are natural objects found in what sense organ? Wait, this is the ear because yeah, in the ear, the there's those free bones, the hammer, the anvil, and the stirrup. So uh -huh. we all I agree. Think it's the ear. ear. The ear it is. All right. And Calvin's actually pointing to it. Ear is correct. For 15 points, the thyroid cartilage in your throat, which is more prominent in men, is named for this biblical man who is said to have swallowed an apple. Yeah, we're going to take a minute to talk about this. I think it's called the Adam's apple. Adam's. Say it again. I think it's That's, called the Adam's apple. Right? It is indeed Adam. the Adam's apple. That's the way to do it, Kelvin. All right. Here's your 25 point question in body systems. Unfortunately, Washington Nationals pitcher Steven Strasburg was out for the season because of numbed fingers. A problem related to this C initial tunnel in his wrist. C initial um, I think wrist. carpal tunnels. I think it's the carpal tunnels. Carpal tunnels? I'm hearing carpal, carpal, carpal. Uh, right. Three heads are working well together, gentlemen. That well, is indeed the I'm carpal sure tunnel. Myself. Good answer. Good answer. Congratulations, gentlemen. You end the first part of your game here with 185 points. All right, it's time now to meet the team from Samuel Ogle Middle School, and they're ready and raring to go. First of all, their captain is Briandella Neva, Anderson Dixon, and Isaiah Damson. Nice to have you all here with us today. And just a reminder again, uh, there are no penalties for incorrect answers. And we're starting it out with 50 points. We have nine questions for you now, just like the nine. They're different from the questions that were answered by Martin Luther King, but of similar difficulty, and they're worth the same number of points. So we're gonna get started here with your green things questions. All right, Ogle for five points. Your genealogy can be displayed on various branches of your family what? What do you guys think? I think it's tree, family tree. Yeah, I think it's family tree. Family tree, absolutely right. That's the way to start the game. You got yourself five points. Here's your 15 point question. Those little car air fresheners that hang from the rear view mirror, they are always coniferous trees and rarely, if ever, these kinds of trees that shed their leaves. Anderson, what do you think? Kinds of trees that shed their leaves. Isaiah. Maybe this is not their strongest category. Briandella, do you have any idea? Mm. No, I think we're gonna skip that one. What's that? I think we're gonna skip that one. Let's skip it. Okay, uh, the correct answer was deciduous trees. Deciduous trees, they drop their leaves in the fall. Uh, even your baby teeth are called deciduous teeth because they fall out. The next question is a visual question in green things worth 25 points, beautiful. If you dissect a hibiscus flower, that's what you're looking at, the pistil and its stigma are very visible. 
as are its hundreds of stamens, you can see the tiny ones there, all topped with these structures that contain the pollen. The name of the reproductive part of the plant that contains the actual pollen will get you 25 points. Guys, Those what are, are you doing? Go ahead. Uh, if you've ever taken a flower apart, uh, you know that you know the pollen, which is an allergen, comes from something called the anthers, A-N-T-H-E-R-S, the anthers. Let's move on to the zoo parade. Zoo parade for five points. <laughs> Despite what restaurant menus say, in real life, buffaloes don't have wings, and these birds don't have fingers. Uh, chicken? I think it's chicken. What do you think, guys? You go to the restaurant. Buffalo wings. Well, buffaloes don't have wings. And sometimes you order chicken fingers. Well, chickens are the answer there. They don't really have fingers. For 15 points in zoo parade. If you visit an aviary, you're there to see birds. But if you visit an apiary, you'll see these insects. Butterflies. Um, Bandy about some insects. Mm -hmm. Talk about and some insects. What did you say? I think it's butterflies. Okay, we're going to go with that. Butterflies is not a bad guess. Actually, bees. Bees. Mm -hmm. An apiary is where they have uh, uh, bees uh, that are making honey. All right, for 25 points in zoo parade. Many animals are monophagous. And if you prepared for science bowl, you know sometimes you can, you can take apart a word and figure out what it means. Many animals are monophagous, but not squirrels. Not squirrels, no. They're not monophagous because what do they do? What do squirrels do? They crawl in trees. They do crawl in trees and they bury nuts. Boy, they are very busy mammals. But mono means one and phagus means to eat. So some animals only eat one thing like koala bears. They just eat leaves from eucalyptus trees. But squirrels, they are polyphagous. They eat anything. They'll eat young birds, they'll eat acorns, they'll eat insects. So they have a varied diet. They can eat lots of different things. All right, body systems for five points. If you can't get a song out of your mind, you're said to have a worm in your what? Um, I think it's a worm. In your mind. The last song you heard, you just you keep thinking about it all day long. And that's known as a worm in your what? In your mind. mind. In your ear. Mind? They're called an earworm. Anderson, what was your idea? It's a worm in your ear. He says ear, you say mind. Isaiah, you're being pretty quiet there. Come on, weigh in. What's your idea? Uh, I agree with Anderson, worm in your ear. Ear yeah, it is. Ear it is. You've got an earworm. All right, good. For 15 points in body systems. A popular cola drink is named for a digestive enzyme in your stomach. Can you name the drink and the enzyme? A cola drink. That, that kind of limits it. It's like there are only five Great Lakes. There aren't that many different kinds of colas. Pick a cola, and the name of the cola is the same, almost the same name as an enzyme in your stomach. Pick, pick the, the cola for me. Mm. You guys, do you think it's Pepsi or Coca-Cola? Isaiah's on the right track, Pepsi or Coca-Cola. All right, decide which one sounds like a chemical found in your stomach. Pepsi. All right, we got Pepsi. That's the first part. Now, can you name the chemical? Good answer, Briandella. Now, give me the second part and I'll give you the points. Name the chemical, the enzyme in your stomach that sounds like Pepsi. Um, it's called pepsin, P-E-P-S-I-N. Helps to break down some of the proteins that you eat. Uh, for 25 points, last one in this category. This was very fortunate. There was a television reporter and she was on camera and someone watching noticed a big lump on her neck. They called in and they told her, you better have that checked. Turned out it was a cancerous growth on what endocrine gland in her neck. 
On her neck? Yes, in her neck. If you know your glands, your, your endocrine glands, you, you'll know the one in the neck. Um, Anderson, do you know what it is? I'm trying to think. Any idea of any kind of gland in your neck? Endocrine glands produce hormones, and the one in your neck is called the thyroid gland. The thyroid gland. Good try, guys. All right, Samuel Ogo, that's 60 points at the halfway point for you. We'll bring you back in a few moments, and I know you're going to get some more points in the second half here. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. It is now time before we ask any more science questions of the team from Martin Luther King to find out about our players. And if you have been followers of our game, you're going to recognize these guys. They all have distinguished records here. Let's start with the captain, Martin. Martin, tell us a little bit about yourself. You're a, a seventh grader now, is that right? Yes. Yes. And as I said at the top of the show, Martin Luther King is the defending middle school champ, and you were part of that team. What is it about Science Bowl that you like? Um, I really like, since it's kind of like Jeopardy, which I enjoy, and I like getting to test my science knowledge and compete against other schools. You do such a nice job of that as well. Can you tell me uh, who the uh, coach of your team is? Um, the coach of our team is Miss Butler, and we actually have a new principal this year, Miss Robin Prince. Yes, and Miss Prince is well known to me. She was at Bowie High School for a long time, a former science teacher. So I know science is close to her heart. And Miss Butler has been with us. We've been around 35 years, and she has been with us most of the way. And she is just she sets the standard for science ball coaches. And uh, tell me also, Martin, do you have any alternates on your team? Because they're important. We have two alternates, Samar Khan and Paul Herring. Wonderful. And those young men work very hard to be here, and we're going to see them at the end of the program here. Martin, uh, tell me what you hope to do someday. Um, I hope to be an engineer one day because I really enjoy math and science, which I think somewhat has to do with engineering and STEM. And also, um, I enjoy because I know in engineering you get to solve problems, which I really enjoy or coming up with solutions to things which other people haven't before. I think you're going to be successful at whatever you try, young man. You have a, a discipline about yourself. And uh, I know you like to hike the Appalachian Trail, too, which takes some discipline. Let's talk to your teammates. Uh, Kelvin. Yes. Kelvin, we're going to bring you up here. And if you can just tell the audience a little bit about yourself. So you're brand new to Martin Luther King. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, for those of you who watched at the end of last year when we did our first Zoomed versions of Science Bowl, Kelvin was there, and boy, he just knocked it out of the park, and Bonneville won their first ever county championship in 35 years. So you guys, and did you wear your medal? Yes, yes, I did. Well, uh, that's just great. Tell us, uh, first of all, who, uh, uh, or rather, what you'd like to do someday. Um, I'd like to be an electrical engineer because I just like, working with electrical stuff and engineering is something that I'm really interested in. That's so. great. Tell me how distance learning has been going for you. Have you adapted yourself to this extraordinary circumstance? I mean, it's, it's different. I mean, I have good teachers, so that's, it's good. I like it's it. good. Like yeah. It. But uh, this is a way to see kind of your friends maybe that you're missing, but you're brand new to the school. So you've never really been in a Martin Luther King classroom. You're just in there in a virtual classroom. You're playing a good game. And Kevin, Kevin, let's talk to you in just a few moments. We all agree that we love your background. Tell us about the background there. Um, so this is actually, um, when this was actually part of my math, homework um for something is that, is that algebra back there no it's not algebra it um was it's it kind was of one of uh, my math homeworks from last year okay it's very impressive we appreciate that you did that for us what do you want to do someday kevin um no i don't really know but it's but it's probably going to be like something computer related because i like computers you got a lot of years to decide on that but you're a great player and you were part of the martin luther king team last year as well were you not 
Yes. Yes, all right. All right, we're gonna join you up with your other two teammates here. And we have nine more questions that we wanna ask you from the three remaining categories. And just to reiterate, you have 185 points at this juncture. So if uh, Kelvin and Kevin and Martin, if you're ready, uh, let's get back into the game. All right, here's your let's get physical question in five points. When our moon appears to change shape, it goes through its phases. When it does that, it's just an optical what? Based on the amount of sunlight reflected from its surface. I think it's illusion. an illusion, mm -hmm. yeah. Optical illusion it. is correct, yes. Next, we have a visual question for you for Let's Get Physical for 15. <laughs> Look at this stuff. It's called elephant's toothpaste. You can make that elephant's toothpaste and create huge amounts of foam if you mix together dishwashing liquid, sodium iodide, and this chemical with the formula H2O2. H2O2. Can I take a minute to talk about this? So H2O. So I think it's two hydrogen. Is it hydrogen peroxide? So it's probably is it, is it, something to do. So it's two hydrogen, two oxygen. Is that? Um, I hear you guys banning about peroxide. answers there. It is I think it's hydrogen, hydrogen peroxide. peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide, the substance that you use. Uh, oftentimes when you use it as an antiseptic on, on a cut. All right, you guys are doing very well here. And your 25 point question, let's get physical, is this. Bees tongues, probably never thought about bees having tongues. Bees have tongues that are like Swiss army knives. They're able to suction or lap up a flower's nectar. Their decision on whether to lap it up or suck up the nectar is based on this V initial quality of the liquid, V as in Victor. What V initial quality of the liquid, the nectar, determines whether the bee will lap it up or suck it up? I think it's um, viscosity. Yeah. Viscosity. Same. That's viscosity. it, boy, that was a tough question. You got it, 25 points, you got it. Viscosity is correct. Let's do science potpourri. I like this question for five points. The National Hockey League team in Seattle has named itself for what K initial mythical sea beast immortalized by the movie line, release the what? I think it's Kraken. Kraken. Yes, Kraken. Right, Kel, did you see that movie? It was, no. yeah, it's, it's a line that everybody seems to remember. Kraken is correct for 15 points in potpourri. Dr. Anthony Fauci, who we've listened to throughout the pandemic, recently had surgery to remove a growth on his vocal cords that has what same P initialed name as the creatures that live inside of a coral reef. Um, we're gonna take a minute to talk about this. Um, P initialed. Um, oh, it's like I think it's pa. Um, just whatever P thing comes, we just need to have an answer. It seems like it's on the tip of your tongue out there, gentlemen. Poly it's a it's a polyp. P O L Y P polyps. Uh, can are growths in your throat sometimes in your intestine also the name of those found in coral reefs here's your 25 point question in science potpourri the list of electrically charged minerals in gatorade known as electrolytes that help your muscles contract include n a k c a and c l can you give me the names of those four elements n a k c a and c l for 25 points all right, um, so I know I'll know. i repeat those for you. Let's start with N-A. N-A, wait, I think N-A is sodium. N-A is sodium, yeah. N-A is sodium. K. K is iron. Potassium. K potassium. No, K is potassium. K is potassium. Say your answer, please. Potassium for potassium. K. Potassium. What is C-A? C-A, it's not carbon, it's... Try C-L. CL is chlor. Is that chlorine? Chlorine. I'll give you one, one more chance. It's CA. It might be calcium. Yeah, calcium. calcium. It calcium. is calcium. All right. Kevin, you pulled it out at the last moment there. Perfect. All right. You're almost done, guys. Three more questions. Hang in with me. I see some smells. That's good. Dateline for five points. 
always compared in size to a stick of butter, this tiny baby is already a sensation at the National Zoo. Panda. The panda cub, pandas. that's right. 15 points in Dateline. When the two astronauts aboard SpaceX's Dragon capsule returned to Earth, they splashed down in what same body of water where two hurricanes were occurring at the same time this past summer. We're going um, to talk about this. Uh, is that the Pacific or the Atlantic? I it believe might, it's, it might I think also it's be like, I, I think it's Atlantic. Don't. You think it's it like, might also be the Gulf of Mexico because isn't that where like yeah the, the Gulf Stream goes? yes Gulf of Mexico. the Gulf right. Stream the Gulf Melvin, of Mexico. what do you think? Uh, we're gonna go with the Gulf of Mexico. And that the was Gulf a good decision. Mexico. That is the correct answer. Perfect. Yes. Last question for you in the game. Twenty-five points. This is Dateline Science. A book called The Mold M O L D in Doctor Flory's coat tells the story of a man who spirited what first ever antibiotic discovered by Alexander Fleming out of Nazi Germany in World War II? Um, the antibiotic is penicillin is what he created. Penicillin it is. Excellent answer. And that means, Martin Luther King, you end the game at 290 points. All right. We welcome back the team from Samuel Ogle. And before we ask them their second nine questions, let's find out about these players. And let's go first to the captain of the team, Briandella. And Briandella, she told us earlier, she was up early. She was getting ready for this today. You know, there's no exception to doing homework. You got to do your homework, and you've done it today. Tell us about, first of all, your school. Who's your principal, Briandella? Uh, my principal is Dr. What's her name? I forgot her name. I know sometimes they have changed principals there. Uh, who's the cat? Who is the coach of your team? Um, Miss Miss Pumphrey. Miss Pumphrey, that's right. You know, it's sometimes hard. You're not in the same building with these people, even. You know, you've all been at home. It's been rough here, being isolated during this pandemic and learning on our laptops here. Tell me, did you have any alternates, Briandella, on your team, or is it just the three of you? Well, yeah, it's just the three of us. Three of us. All right. Well, you guys, uh, uh, we appreciate you volunteering to do. This is not easy but you volunteered this and you came and you wanted to represent your school. And I applaud you for doing that. Tell us, uh, Brianda, what you hope to do someday. What are your goals? Um, I'm pa very passionate about computer science. Computer science. That'll set you uh, up well because everything is computerized now, of course. And, uh, you know, just get out there and uh, hit your star to one of these great companies and uh, uh, make a name for yourself. Let's find out about your teammates here. Isaiah. Tell us where you are. That's very impressive. Is that your library behind you? Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, are you a reader? Yes, I do read a lot. Yeah, reading is such a good thing. What does it say on your shirt there? 1972. No, what is 1972, that? 1972, uh, Eco United. Very nice. Very nice. Tell me why you wanted to do this. Did you volunteer to do this, or did Miss Pumphrey reach out and say, uh, we need you. I volunteer. Very good. Very good. What do you want to do someday? Uh, a computer software programmer. Also into computers. All right. And software. Wonderful. And and let's talk to your teammate there, Anderson. Anderson, tell us uh, about yourself. Uh, what do you hope to do? What are your goals? Um, when I grow up, I want to be a therapist. You want to be a dentist? A therapist. Okay, that's great. And why did you decide to be part of the Science Bowl? Um, I just thought it would be interesting, an interesting experience. We can't hear you. You're going to have to talk up louder. Why did you want to do this? I thought it would just be an interesting experience. Yeah, and this is a, that's what you got to do in life. You got to challenge yourself and give yourself new experiences, see what works and what doesn't. Maybe you get an idea of what you might want to do in the future. All right. Okay, Samuel Ogle, if you're ready. We're going to go and ask you your nine questions now, the nine remaining, starting with the category, uh, let's get physical. All right. Multiple choice. When a meteorologist, while a meteorologist uses weather instruments, a metrologist, spelled M-E-T-R-O-L-O-G-I-S-T, a metrologist, that person would use a centrifuge, an incubator, or a yardstick. 
Can you please repeat the question? Yes. Well, a meteorologist uses weather instruments. When you watch the news on TV, they have meteorologists giving weather forecasts. They have instruments that they use, barometers, anemometers. But there's another specialist called a metrologist, spelled almost exactly like meteorologist, M-E-T-R-O-L-O-G-I-S-T. Think about what it sounds like. Would that person use a centrifuge in his or her work, an incubator or a yardstick? Uh, you got three, three to pick one. You got one chance out of three here. Pick one. What do you guys think? I think actually a yardstick. Yeah, me too. I think we're going to go with that. What's that? A yardstick. You, it is a, because metrology sounds like meter. See, you thought it through. I knew you could do it. It is a yardstick for 15 points. Glow in the dark watches that used to be very popular were once illuminated by what dangerous chemical element that Marie Curie said gave off faint fairy lights. It's the same chemical element that ultimately killed Marie Curie. Uh, is it mercury? Mercury is an idea there. Anybody else want to weigh in? I'm thinking about neon. Say it again. Neon. Not neon. That's a good because that is, that is a visible light source. You're right. Mercury is also deadly, but the correct answer is radium. Radium is what was in those watches, and she used to have it. It would glow on her skin, and she literally poisoned herself in the course of her work. She did win a, a Nobel Prize, but she paid a high price. Let me give you your 25-point question, In let's get physical. The reason why hurricanes in Texas and Louisiana turn northeast toward Washington and the East Coast you know, they come up from the Gulf of Mexico. It's because the earth spins on its axis, generating which of the following? The Coriolis effect, the Bernoulli effect, or the North Atlantic oscillation? Coriolis effect, Bernoulli effect, or North Atlantic oscillation causes hurricanes to bend toward the East Coast when they come up from the Gulf of Mexico. What you think? You got three choices again. Uh, I think it's the North Atlantic Oscillation. North yes, Atlantic Oscillation? Uh, actually, the Bernoulli effect is why an airplane wing lifts. It's the reason why sometimes when you're taking a shower, the shower person comes in against you. It's a difference in air pressure. The correct answer was the first one. It's called the Coriolis effect. Let's do potpourri for five points. Despite being purple and cuddly, Barney was actually one of these fearsome predatory dinosaurs. Uh, T-Rex. T-Rex, you got it, Isaiah. Next, for 15 points, long after the HMS Beagle, which was a ship, sailed into the harbor of Palmerton, Australia, the town changed its name to this in honor of what famous sailor that was aboard the Beagle? Uh, Christopher Columbus. Christopher Columbus is an idea. Sorry. Anybody else? Sorry. If you, how many of you have heard of Charles Darwin? Charles Darwin oh. was the one who came up with evolution. His ship was the HMS Beagle. And Isaiah said, oh, gosh, I knew that. I knew that. Keep going. You got four more questions here. Let's get them all for 25 points. Well, we all know that PPEs stand for personal protective equipment. Very few people know what COVID-19 actually stands for. What does COVID-19 stand for? I know this. Come on, think about it. Take it apart. It's made up of parts. COVID-19. Uh, the first part, COVID stands for Corona virus. D stands for disease, coronavirus disease, and 19 stands for 2019, when they first discovered it. Five, three more questions. Dateline for five points is a visual question. We're going to bring up a picture for you. 
many of you will recognize, this is the very famous photo of Albert Einstein. It highlights his tongue. He stuck his tongue out at the photographer, but also it highlights his eyes, which were used as models for the eyes of what famous friendly movie alien who rode a bicycle into the night sky. E.T. E.T., you got it, Anderson, perfect, E.T. His eyes were based on Albert Einstein's eyes. Good answer, for 15 points. It was the Italian scientist Torricelli who is credit, credited with inventing the first of these weather instruments that measures air pressure. Some people have these in their homes. What weather instrument measures air pressure? A thermometer. The thermometer is a good guess. The thermometer actually measures the temperature, but the pressure is measured by a barometer, barometer. Same ending, B-A-R-O, barometer. Last question for 25 points under Dateline. The first African-American woman to run for president, Shirley Chisholm, had a campaign button that read blank for change. In that blank was what C initial kind of chemical that like an enzyme, enzyme is not used up in a chemical reaction. She used that as the first word in her slogan, blank for change. Begins with a C kind of chemical like an enzyme that's not used up in a chemical reaction. Any idea guys? That's a tough question. Question? Anderson, what'd you say? Can you repeat the question? Sure. The first African-American woman to run for president, this was back in the 1970s. Her name was Shirley Chisholm. She was from New York. And one of her buttons that she wore to get people to vote for her said something for change, a C-lettered word, something for change, a C-lettered word. It's kind of chemical that is like an enzyme. It's in a chemical reaction, but it is not used up. It is not part of the reaction. It just helps move it along. It begins with a C. It can be calcium. Say something. I said calcium, but. It sounds like the word is a catalyst. Catalyst. C-A-T-A-L-Y-S-T. -A, -A, a catalyst. That was a tough question. And you gave it all you could there. This is a tough round here. And your final tally is 75 points for Samuel Ogle. Well, that is it. That is the first game of our 35th season. Two outstanding middle schools here today. Some very tough questions, but uh, I bet you were challenged at home to answer them. We are very proud of all of our players here today. Our final tally is Martin Luther King, 290, Samuel Ogle, 75. That means, King, you are going to advance in the competition. Chance to become a semifinalist this year and maybe repeat a county championship. And Samuel Ogle, I want to thank you guys. Let's give a round of applause to everybody. A round of applause to everybody. Miss Humphrey is down there, Karen Humphrey, the coach from Samuel Ogle. Miss Elizabeth Butler is there, also in the center, the coach of Martin Luther King. And we have our alternates out there as well from Martin Luther King. And uh, who are those alternates, alternates out there? Let's see, we have Samar and Paul. Samar and Paul, would you wave to us? Where's Samar and Paul? Thank you guys. Thank you for being part of this. Thank you. Mr. Z, um, our principal is here now, Miss Prince. <laughs> She's on there the camera she now. She joined us down there. There is Miss Prince, the new principal at Martin Luther King. And Robin, so good to see you again. I know you were such a great principal out there at Bowie, and I know you were a science teacher. So this is at your heart. Congratulations to you. And thank all of you for watching, for being with us today and for all the years. We hope you'll join us again on Zoom and also to see us online and also on channels uh, 96 and 38. See you soon. Bye-bye.